Hey guys, it's Doc from Gold Hog, and I'm going to show you today our new portable gold pan, which is called the Flow Pan. So hold on. Hey guys, it's Doc, and uh, today I'm going to show you the new product we have for 2018, which is our portable gold pan. You can call it a porta pan, or you can call it a flow pan. You can call it whatever you want, but uh, <clears throat> we call it the flow pan. Um, but the whole premise of this pan is that I wanted to create a portable gold pan. I'm going to go over some of the features of it and how it works. But um, it's chilly out here. It's uh, I got up early this morning, about 5:30 this morning, loaded up my truck and shot up to the mountains of Georgia to shoot this little video because we don't have any video of the flow pan working. So um, I'm going to be a little bit chilly. I got on the waders, got on my warm gloves, and I'm going to shoot a little video for you and demonstrate how it works and just a few little tips. All right, so to better understand the flow pan, before I actually get to it, let me tell you a couple things real quick. Number one, this has been three years in the making. I've been bugging the shop for three years about coming out with some kind of portable gold pan, something that I could put in my pack or put under my seat, but was big enough that would allow me to work a lot of material. We actually went down the road of a rubber pan that we could actually roll up and it just didn't work out. One of my main rules when creating gold mining equipment, it has to pass my golden rule. And my golden rule is, is we do not make toys. Let me say that again. We do not make toys. I don't make equipment that you sit with a little scoop and scoop into. We make mining equipment. So you take a shovel, unclassified, dump it into it and work it and work it fast and be efficient. So my number one rule for every product we sell is we don't make toys. If it works like a toy, if it feels like a toy, we don't sell it. The next rule for this thing that I had to pass is it had to be portable. It had to break down really small that I could put it into a backpack, that I could stick it into my glove box basically, or stick it under my seat and leave it there and not worry about it. And when I wanted a gold pan a, or something to work a lot of material, it would work a lot of material. And I'll show you that here in a second. Number three, we've been working for about a year and a half on a technology called the Crossflow technology. And the Crossflow technology sort of says, well, let's kill, could we combine possibly sort of the Crossflow in exchange of a sluice into a gold pan? So what we did is, is we opened up the sides on this, and this is one of where one of our patent supplies is, it's a Crossflow technology inside of a gold pan. So it's kind of a hybrid, even though it's a gold pan, it uses that cross flow technology. Now you can get solid sides. We're gonna offer optional solid sides to this too. So you can get it with a cross flow or you can get it with, you can get, you can order an extra set of sides on it that actually have solid sides on it. So you can work it either way. So let me show you what it looks like broken down. So this is pretty cool. This is the unit broken down. It weighs about, this weighs about three pounds. So this is the unit actually broken down. This is what it looks like. I can stick it in the backpack. I can stick it under my seat. I don't have to worry about it. And you're saying to yourself, well, what, is that, what does that turn into? <laughs> well, what it turns into is kind of a beast of a product. It turns into the flow pan. Let me grab it. Through the use of only six wing nuts, nothing else, six wing nuts, it turns into this a monster gold pan with crossflow technology. And let me explain how this works. So basically you have one, two, three, four, five pieces that all bolt together with six wing nuts. Now, my pan is the last prototype version um, and the bolts are on this side. The pans that we're sending out will have bolts on the ends. There's a reason for it, I'll explain it later. Um, but that's it. It's real sturdy. There's almost no flex in this pan. That's what amazes us is, is because of the way that we designed it, the overlapping and the structure of it, this thing does not flex. It's made of 12 gauge heavy aluminum. That's the same aluminum we use on our super hogs. So it's 12 gauge aluminum. <clears throat> uh, extremely durable, lifetime warranty on it. But it also comes with a piece of matting inside of it. And this mat just pulls right out. We're gonna ship it out with talon mat, which is real aggressive inside of it. But if you look at the sides, the sides have actual areas that allow water to come in through this pan and help you actually exchange out some of the material. Look, 
Gold settles real, real quickly. Gold settles because of its weight. It's 19 times heavier than water. <clears throat> within seconds, once you start to stratify something, gold is on the bottom of your pan within seconds. The problem is, is how do I get all that other junk out of the pan? And typically what you have to do with a regular pan, with a regular gold pan, you can only put a small amount of dirt in here. Once you get the gold to the bottom, if you try and move those larger rocks out, it's gonna drag out the other gold. So you have to go in there with your hand or you have to classify material. With this pan, you don't have to classify. The sides are about two and a half inches, so any rock smaller than two and a half inches will float, will be able to push out of the side of it. But the problem with this is, is as you start to push out those bigger rocks and bigger material, you have the chance for the smaller pieces of gold to actually blow out of there. So, <clears throat> once you get the gold to settle into here, it gets trapped in the mat and it's down inside that mat and you can really aggressively blow out all that other material and not worry about it. So let me answer a couple questions that are kind of come up and I'm gonna deal more with this later on. How often do you have to clean it out? Um, my goal was to be able to work, okay. So if I have a five gallon bucket, most people will fill up a five gallon bucket about two thirds or three quarters of the way with pay. You can work one of those buckets with this pan unclassified, I would say in about 10 minutes. It's roughly there, depending on how hard you wanna work. So you can work a bucket about every 10 minutes with this pan. And what I like to do is, after each bucket is pull my mat out, just dip it in the pan, and then put it right back in. That's probably the best way to do it. It's designed for creek bed material. A lot of people want to know, well, is it designed for sand? No. Pans don't work well with sand. It's designed for regular creek bank material, which is what I'll be using today and doing some demonstrations on it so you can see it. So anyways, enough talk. Let me go ahead and uh, I'm gonna fill this baby up with some dirt and work it, and we'll see how it goes. So that's about the amount of material I like to put in this, which is about one huge shovel full of material. Um, you don't want to make it too heavy because it'll, it'll sort of weigh on your back a little bit. So the way that you work this pan is, you take this pan and you face down creek. So the river is flowing through my legs right now. And what I'm going to do is, you're going to see me, I'm going to spin it, shake it, spin it, shake it for about five seconds. I'm going to turn into the flow of the creek this way. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do this motion. And what that's gonna do is most of my material, when I go like this, is gonna come off the other end. If I have any large rocks, I'll have to pick those out, like three inch rocks, I'll have to pick them out. But that's the whole premise of this pan. <clears throat> bust my butt here. So, face down creek, spin it, shake it, spin it, shake it, stratify, gold is down the bottom. Turn into the flow of the creek, Go like this. Flow is coming this way. Stop and go, stop and go, stop and go. You're not trying to take it all the way down, you're just trying to get it so that the heavies are at the bottom of the mat. So let me show you how I'm doing it. Drop it in. Shake it. About five seconds. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn into the flow, which I don't have a lot of flow here, I'm going to turn into the flow of the creek now and let the creek flow take it through. And there we go. So it's about five seconds this way, about five seconds this way. And that's what I'm left with. So you can see how quickly that washes out the material. Let me do another pan full. So again, you can see how much dirt I've got here. It's a, about a big shovel full. Go in the water, turn my back. Now remember, I'm not in a high flow area. This is a very soft area and it still works well. Come in, drop it down, spin it, shake it, spin it, shake it, stop, turn sideways. 
little motion there like that. Now my big rocks, if I have any big rocks they need to come out. And that's what I'm left with. Still a nice clean mat. So, that's sort of the whole premise of the gold pan. Now you do have to remember which way the rock needs to go because you have talon mat in here. So this is the upper end. So somehow I probably need to put a mark up here to say, hey, the water flow needs to go this way to create those vortexes inside the bottom of the pan. But man, this thing is fast. <laughs> I mean, it's really fast. It is so cool. So what I'm gonna do is, um, demonstration. There really isn't a lot of gold right here in this area. This is where people are running machines, so it's just a lot of tailings. So I'm gonna fill it up, and what I'm gonna do is I brought some vials with me. Inside these vials is five pieces of gold in each vial. I'm gonna put the gold on top and leave it on top. And what I'm gonna do is, is I'm gonna work it just like I just did, turn it and work it, take the mat out and see how many pieces I catch. So let me start that test. Alright, so this is just a fun little test. Basically, I've got five little pickers in here, and I'm going to take this pan, oh, which is pretty full of dirt, you can see it. That's two or three shovelfuls. Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and I'm going to put it right on top. Alright, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this gold, I'm going to put this gold right on top. Should be five. Then I'm gonna take this to the creek just like it is, work it, and let's see what happens. Then I'll put that mat in the pan. And that water's cold, so I'm putting my gloves on. I'll take it out here and work it. So you can see again, that whole process was about 10 seconds of panning. My pan is empty except for heavies on my mat. I'm gonna pull my mat, put it in one of these pans. So I'm pulling out my mat and putting it into this pan. And then whatever's in the bottom, cause we leave some spaces, I'm gonna put in the pan as well too. So now I'm gonna clean this mat out. So let's pan it and see what we got. This process will take longer than that whole process there. Got five little five little nuggets sitting right in there. One, two, three, four, five. So, what does that tell you? That tells you that gold sinks very, very quickly. Five seconds stratifying, five seconds letting it flow out, and all my gold is stuck in the mat. I basically cleaned out that entire pan except for the mat, five pieces. Let's do another one. Let me get another vial of five. Here's another vial of five. I'm going to put it right on the top. I only saw four. I oh, know, there's five. There's five pieces there. Again, it's important to remember that 
the area I'm working doesn't have a whole lot of flow to it. This is a pretty dead section, so that was one of my main concerns. People, question, question that people are going to ask is, do I have to have a bunch of flow? No. You can see how still this water is here, and the pan is working wonderfully even without any flow. So five pieces of gold on top. You might even be able to see them there. They're sitting right on top. Just downstream. Let it sink. Five seconds of that. And then that motion of Big chunk of pyrite. Big chunk of pyrite in there. So that was it. So you can see how clean it is. Five seconds this way, five seconds this way. I hate to repeat myself, but I'm going to. And I'm going to put this mat in a pan and clean it out. There we go again. You can see it. One, two, three, four, five. Five pieces in there. Again, these are like little pickers. They're flat, so they're hard to fall. That's what I wanted to show, though, is I wanted to show... <clears throat> I wanted to show just how quickly gold falls. If you understand panning, if you understand mining math, <clears throat> gold will fall down within seconds to the very bottom of almost anything. So all you have to do is have some something in place to hold it at the bottom while you blow it out, i.e. a sluice. Um, but every, every test pan I do, whoa, look at that. Where'd that come from? Man, there's a bunch of fine gold in here too. I'm gonna get my camera and show that. But every test pan I do, same, same result. Put five pieces of gold on top, five pieces of gold back. But I want to show you, I just saw a whole bunch of fine gold in here, which is unusual. All right, so I don't want you to look at the biggies. Let's move those out of the way. What I want you to look at, look at that. Can you see that fine gold in there? I'm talking like 100 mesh gold sitting in there. That's pretty cool. Pretty darn cool. So that's a, uh, that's a good sign. Now I've got some, the next test I'm going to do is I'm going to run a whole five gallon bucket through this thing. I'm going to seed it with a lot of gold, but I'm going to use this nasty, nasty, nasty clay material up here, which I hate. Uh, this is excavated from clay layers up here. It's just full of, it's 80% clay, lots of black sand. So I'm going to grab a bucket of that stuff, which I don't want to do. I'm gonna seed a bunch of gold into it. I'm gonna work it down, a five gallon bucket. It'll probably take me about five minutes, maybe seven minutes. And then I'll show you what the mat looks like at the end of that. So hold on. Hey guys, so here's what I'm doing. I am, um, I took a, went up to the pile and I seeded in some of our concentrates. There's probably a few grams of gold. So when I put in a scoop in the bucket of this nasty clay stuff, I put in a handful or two of our concentrates another shovel full. So all through the bucket, gold is mixed into this. <clears throat> and I'm moving over to an area in the creek that's got a little more flow to it. So I was in the still area. I'm gonna move into a little bit more flow area and I'm gonna show you, I guess I'm gonna leave the camera rolling and I'm gonna show you myself working a five gallon bucket, which is almost three quarters of the way full. Showing you working completely unclassified material, very, very heavy clays in the creek working it with this pan, so hold on. All right, so I'm all set up. Now, one recommendation that I noticed is if you put your pan in the creek and walk away from it, put a rock inside of it, because it is aluminum, and uh, you'll be doing the 75-yard dash after your flow pan if you don't put a rock inside of it. Turn it so that it's flowing in the creek and just stick a rock inside of it. So let me go ahead and work this. Again, a five-gallon bucket. I'm just gonna let it roll. Let's see what happens. Set your body thoughts 
Full five gallon bucket. Again, I seeded in a bunch of gold from our concentrates, some big gold, some little gold. But this is really cool to look at. Let me show it to you. So this is what I'm left with. Let me tilt it so the sun's not hitting it. So here's my flow pan. That's after a five gallon bucket. And then I want you to look at that. I put some big pieces in there. Look at that, look how clean that is. But there's a bunch of little gold in there. I know that there's some uh, 100 mesh in here too. But I wanted to just, you know, just show big nuggets. I want to show all different sizes of gold. And you can see that that mat is just gripping it and gripping it. Dude, this is going to be too cool. Let's put that into a, a pan and check it. All right, just a little Facebook Live. So I wanted to show everyone that pan, all that gold in that mat. That's just incredible, man. That's incredible how clean, how clean that mat got. I'm still shocked. How clean that mat got and that gold just sitting in there. But let me show you what I'm talking about, the gold that I seeded in here. <clears throat> I knew there were several grams in here, but you can see I wanted to use all sizes. So I've got nuggets, pickers, small gold, and there's some fine gold up in here too. That's pretty cool. So all that gold was seeded into a five gallon bucket and it stayed in the mat through the whole five gallon bucket. That's pretty important there. Hey guys, just perspective wise, let me show you what I'm doing. Just so you get a better feel. There's a full gold pan. So there's a full gold pan. Let me put this into the flow pan just so you can get a better perspective. And that'll show you how much material it'll hold. So that's a full gold pan inside there right now. So I'm gonna take it out and freak the work it down.
Anyways, guys, that's uh, the new flow pan on our website again. We're starting to take pre-orders. We hope to have it start shipping January 1st, 2018 or sooner than that. There should be an option if you want to do the solid sides on it. Uh, it does come with a pre-made piece of matting. It comes with everything you need. It comes with the mat, it comes with all the sides, it comes with all the wing nuts, it comes with all the stickers. It comes with all that, ships out. I think flat rate shipping anywhere in the US, I think is $16.80. Um, it depends where you are, how we ship it, whether it's USPS or UPS. Uh, that, also, that price also applies to Alaska. Um, and then we'll have some international pricing on it too. So really cool guys i'm so excited about this product it is just really cool really fast works well it's not a toy dot gold hardware